Hey everybody. Um, so this is a very different video than the other videos that I've shown. The other videos have all been about the internals and how the system works. And in this one, we're not even going to open the mission editor. Um, this is the first two stages, and I'll, I'll go into some details about what that is um, just for play. Um, and this is the first two stages of a battle. That's going to be three stages. Um, that'll be up on the server 24-7 here in just a couple days um, as I build it out. It doesn't take very long to build, but I don't have a lot of free time. So um, I'm just going to talk about how you would come in and play it and what the general rules are. There's, there's actually a good deal of flexibility in how the mission can be laid out. Um, also, the icons are going to look better. I, I, I mentioned this in some previous videos. The icons are terrible. Um, I don't, they're not terrible in the game. I just don't know how to use them. <laughs> and I'll, I'll make them look better soon. Um, but they're totally functional and they make sense. So when you come into the battle, it'll look something like this. Um, there are two currently active phases, and that, what the phase really means is that's what's happening in the current battle right now. And so right now the phase it, the phase is really it's right around this active unit, and I'll talk about what that what that means right there where the target is in just a bit. We're going to go through each of these units, but I'm going to talk about the global battle first. So essentially in this operation server, you have a series, and there can be just one, but there can be any number up to the maximum number that we can fit in the game before it starts hurting performance number of phases and phases are the currently active units effectively and there's not really overlap between the two phases so like when stuff is going on here which is in the first phase um, when this finishes and we'll talk about how that happens it'll move to the next phase which is over here it's very close um, and we'll talk about the details of this battle too when it moves here then all this stuff goes away and this is how this this system maintains like exactly how many units are currently active so that's how it maintains it at maximum number of possible active units for the available performance and the idea being that is performance and like optimizations happen to the engine or simply we get more powerful machines we can start adding more units to this but it already has a lot of active units um and it runs literally indefinitely um, there's different ways to set it up where there's wind conditions where it goes to a different thing, but you can most certainly set it where even just a single phase runs forever. Um, so, what's really going on here? And what are you guys doing as people in the game? So, initially, obviously, you're going to pick your airfield. Um, I'm going to have a better briefing than this crap. Um, and pick your airplane. And notice the first thing I would like to show are these letters above the airfields. Um, they're on all four airfields, and you can pick from any of the four airfields, although there's only two airfields per phase, and I'll talk about that in a second. But they're all they're going to be available the whole time, at least as it is right now. Um, and you should pick an airfield that's going to do basically what you're needed for the mission. And that will be explained in the mission instructions. Um, and also I'll talk about them verbally right here and right now. Um, basically what's going on here is the Germans are this throughout this entire phase going to be pushing eastward towards Stalingrad. And on this one, they're coming across from over here. They have support units coming in here. Um, they have air, air units flying in this general direction. Um, these need to be zones because you're not really entirely sure where they're coming from. I'll, I'll get into some details about that. Like, the support cars could be coming down this road into here, or coming down this road into here. But they are going to be coming down into about right here, give or take. Um, and like the Russian support units are actually coming in from down here. Um, and this is an interesting thing. I like this one because I think this position of the battle almost would have required the Russians to come in from either way north or way south because it's the only bridge across the Don. So um, there it is. And so that's how they're getting their support units in. And what's happening is that this air base right here is getting attacked by German tanks also by German airplanes and those tanks and airplane those tanks are being supplied by these supply units part of this dynamic system and this is just again I'm really just going to do my best to focus just on from play is that support units coming in and these can be different kinds of units and the types of units they are uh, depend on events we'll talk about that too these support units coming in are actually supplying these things um, such that they, they all interact with each other to give needs. So like, if you start coming over here and dropping these supply units as Russians, you will hurt the tanks. The tanks will not be able to resupply with as good of tanks, um, or as fast as tanks. It all depends on the situation and how the mission builder builds it. Um, in this situation, they're just going to be slower moving tanks, um, or they're just going to be weaker, or not, uh, not as many are going to be available. And also, as you hurt these units, you're going to hurt the overall score, too. We'll get to that in a second. Also, if you succeed at bringing these in, you can improve your units. 
Or like when the tanks succeed, they really tell the support units, hey, it's safer to bring in more effective support units. So like when this, if you start bombing the support units, they're going to start becoming more and more defensive. Um, so like at, let's say initially they're cars. I'm speaking in the general, not this mission in particular. Let's say initially they're like cars when they're really doing a good job because they're bringing in like, I don't know, officers and crap. And you bomb them. They're going to start sending out units that maybe have FLAC 38, right? Like some defense. So um, all the units act like that. And so in this one, there's a supply unit from the Germans. Both sides are kind of um, have parity in this mission. That's not a requirement. It's just how this is for simplicity. Um, there's supply units, there's air units, um, and there's tanks on the German side in this phase. And the Russians have the same setup, ge generally. They have supply units, they have tanks, and they have air units. And they also have this thing called a target unit. Both sides do. Generally, in missions, I, th I find it more effective. Um, other mission builders may have other ideas, and they're totally free to. Duh. Um, to have only one side really have their target be primary, be a primary source of the battle. So, like, I'll talk about the details of the target in a second, but the German target is over here. And, like, it's kind of out of play. You know what I mean? That means the players, the humans, can go here and take effect of this, but we'll talk about what it does first. Um, while the Russian target, and this is the Russian one, is totally in play, as you can see. In fact, the German tanks are coming in to attack it. We have some Russian tanks coming in to defend against it. We also have some Russian artillery defending it. And it's just this airbase. Um, there's some units on the airbase that when destroyed, you just have to destroy enough of it, really, that this will get destroyed. And as long as your side's target is currently active, it will be slowly improving all of your units. Slowly. It will also be improving something called your base score, which is this letter above your airfield that I mentioned at the beginning and said I would talk about and hadn't yet. Uh, but we'll get there. Um, if the other side destroys this, um, then it no longer supplies, thus improving everything. And it also knocks everything down one level. So everything gets just a little bit weaker, and it can give the battle momentum. Um, but mind you, when you get knocked down, it doesn't mean you're necessarily weaker. You might be more defensive. It just means you're less likely to succeed at your mission. And we'll talk about that as soon as we start talking about these levels. The first level we're going to talk about is the global level, the whole phase level. So the Russians are at level B, and it's four levels, A, B, C, and D. And the Germans are also at level B. That's just how this mission starts, and it just started a few minutes ago. So um, I'm just, I, this is open, so I'm just going to make sure nobody signed in. Um, and tell them what was up. So as your units overall are doing better, you can improve this score. And also, the longer your target is alive, you can improve this score. And as you destroy enemy units, if we were Russian, then it would diminish the score. So, like, as we knock these units down, I'll go into the details of, we'll start knocking this down. And then there are basically, they're arbitrary, um, but conditions that switch you to the next phase. And for this specific battle, the next phase is switched to as soon as the Russians are defeated. If the Russians get down to D, um, they get all their units fail at their battle, fail at their missions. All these units have missions that they have to succeed at. And if all of them are continuously failing at them and just dying, then you're going to get knocked down to D, and it's going to move to the next phase where the Germans had succeeded. And they're going to have set up right here, and in the next phase, which is in this mission, like it will switch to it. I mean, probably not for 45 minutes, but it will, um, based on events. As soon as the Russians are defeated, it will come through, and the Russians, the Germans will be set up here, and will be pushing across the bridge at Kalak, and they'll be set up over here, moving tanks, um, starting to come in on the actual Kalak air base. And then the phase after that, which is not implemented yet, but will be in just a couple of days, is going to move somewhere across here. I'm not exactly sure yet. Um, I'll find somewhere that looks cool. <laughs> That's not honestly what I'm doing. I would really like to build some historic missions, but right now this is like mostly just... Um, demonstrating the features because there's really a huge amount of flexibility this doesn't show but it does this mission um, does show the vast majority of the features so uh, not only do you globally per phase have a level a b c or d that's demonstrated above your airfield but each unit has one and you can see them here so like this is the russian air unit um, and this is a bunch of air units it can be what could be coming out of this could be pe2s could be il2s could be um lag threes or lag fives um, and when it's D, it's lag threes. <laughs> that's that's what's out here. I, I put fighters, and you, this this is your choice. But when you build a mission, I put fighters on C and D because they're they're less likely to succeed at their mission, which is in this case bomb tanks. Like they're not really going to succeed at that. But they're going to clear the airspace, and as they succeed at clearing the airspace, then the the bombers at A and B can come in. 
Um, and so what you want to do as a player, um, I guess I should just go through a couple more of these. The tanks are also A, B, C, and D, and it depends on how, again, it's, it's how effective they are. In this mission, and for the Germans, the D tanks are actually very heavy tanks. Um, but it takes them a long time to get over here, and they really got to get over here to win and to succeed at their mission. And also big, slow tanks. That There's big artillery right here that's pretty good at killing those big, slow tanks. And the faster German vehicles get in there really fast. And so, like I said, it's the mission builder's choice of what represents D and what represents A and the things in between it. But essentially, from a player, you should think of it as A is aggressive and is going to succeed at their mission, whatever that happens to be. And D is defensive and is not going to succeed at their mission, but is going to clear the area so that the uh, future units can succeed at their mission. Um, and so then what is the mission, right? Like, what it, what is the goal of each of these? Um, I'm going to go over them quickly, but it would be written in here. It's essentially that the air units are defending this area. The the Russians the Russians are defending and the Germans are attacking. And that that's really all you totally need to think about, knowing that they have supply lines, that when you destroy, you hurt their supplies, that they have air airplanes that will either be shooting down your bombers if you need bombers, or will be bombing units that you need for defense. You know, like, these guys will be coming in and not just attacking this airbase, but they'll attack these. And these guys will actually, even though the zone thing doesn't go right here, they'll catch these supply units over here. And these supply units really come up to, like, here. I just suck at the map. At <laughs> using the map. Sorry. Um, and so you'll really need to protect your units. Like, that's... This is intended to really enforce people working together additionally all of these guys resupply each other it is incredibly difficult for a lone player to say knock down um these d the d tanks like if i took off here with my ill 2 and i was like i'm either going to attack all the german tanks like there's 10 of them out at a time at least and like it you're not going to be able to knock them down in a meaningful way additionally it takes the death of a lot before they like get knocked down and start to fail and so it really requires some coordination um that said, left to itself, so like when you just play this out, it will play itself out. Um, but it does take it a while. Essentially, as long as these are active, the two bases are active, then both sides are continuously improving and they'll slowly tend, very slowly, like it takes like six hours, towards everything becoming A. And it generally will occur that way, although it can take some time and it doesn't always. Um, and, but if the AI managed to destroy, I mean, I had to test that by making the stuff at the active air bases be um, invincible but if you with them active the ai will knock those down and it's pretty much with just the ai which other side gets its base destroyed first is probably the side that's going to lose but not 100 percent. and it's pretty random additionally when these missions start it's random how the loadouts are these a b c's and d's with the exception of in this one i always start these two sides at b so it doesn't go super fast um, so nobody accidentally randomly gets a d um, I think that's actually pretty much it. Like, that's what's going on. Uh, I'm going to bring you into it really quick. Um, I probably didn't even put bombs on, so I'll start my engine, but I bet I won't take off. Also, I think the video looks pretty crappy. Um, but I have this all... This is another thing for players, is I intend to have... If I'm running a server, it's probably going to be expert mode. But right now, it's totally normal, because I need to be able to do stuff like what I'm doing. Um, so let's find out where we are first. And this won't take very long. I'm just going to, like, go around the mission a touch. So this is this is probably our air base. That matters. And let's go to F11. Thank the world for F11. And by the way, anybody that hasn't seen the Alt F2 thing, um, that's like a gunner view, it is so rad. And there's a bunch of them, maybe like five or six. So this is that air base. Here, I'll show you on the map really quick, too. Right here. This is where we're at. And so our little base, like the stuff that they want to hit, this is kind of this is kind of hackish. I mean, there's going to be a lot more statics and stuff. So as you guys are playing this, please don't pay too much attention to how things look, um, just how they function. They should still look pretty good. And so they have some artillery blocking them over there. By the way, that little car that's moving right in the center, that is rearming and repairing the artillery. And it is going to be very difficult to knock back the artillery without destroying that car. And that car will repair itself too in time, um, but it takes a while. Uh, right over here we just have these vehicles moving around are actually vehicles that are attached to the base that I was too lazy to set up nicely. Sorry. Um, and then there's this crap on the base that when gets destroyed. Um, see there's some ZIS-5 fuels, there's some re being repaired airplanes, there's some PE-2s over here. By the way, those are a primary target. <laughs> um, and as you hit those, you can turn this 
from active to deactive to destroyed i think and then you're going to knock down the old knock down the russians whole side and this is in this phase of the battle that is way more likely to happen because the germans have the advantage of all the ai is over this um while there's nothing attacking the german space unless um multiplayer players decide to i want to make a quick note for single players too single player mission is coming in very soon um okay so Um, the single player, sorry, sorry, I stopped talking because I know when the engine's on, you can't hear a thing. Um, the single player is going to work in a very similar way, except those phases are going to follow you, as opposed to events, like, just what's going on is the stuff going to be around you. So see, here's the German supply lines, and you'll notice they're Flak 38, so they're either C or D. Um, and they're going to be coming in, so they're D, and they're going to be coming in from either here or here. And you don't know, you don't know, but they come into the same place and supply the tanks right here. Um, I think that's it. Um, I hope that I see you guys up in the sky. So oh, cool. There's some new Stukas coming in. Four or five of them, probably. Four. Sweet. So this means that the German planes, to continue, to continue with that idea, the German planes are at um, B. Yeah. They're HE 111s at A. And, uh,. This gets very active in here when all the units are there. It's a lot of fun, and I hope to see you guys in the skies.